What is up? Now we're getting ready to head to the gym. We're gonna do an upper body strength day with some accessory work as well. She is making me a shake at the moment. What are we getting in that thing? Well, I just took my project one, so I'm ready for my, my lifting session. Um, but, this is what I was looking for. Trade out the project one. We do not want to put project one in our shake. Pat would be going crazy. But I'm just using one scoop of CTC level one, so it's kind of like a cinnamon toast crunch. And you take one scoop of ignition. Why am I making a shake? I don't know. I should be making my own shake right now. One scoop? One scoop for me. One scoop, okay. Because I'm a nice wife. Just remember that, everyone. So one scoop of ignition, then I'll make mine too. But we don't share a shake. We both need our post-workout shakes. However, we are getting ready to go to the gym. I actually haven't worked out yet. So it's 1.30. Normally I'm already in the middle of my second session or almost done. And today I had to coach six and seven and then I had to get some work done and I just have not made it to the gym yet. So I think sometimes that's okay. I feel a little off because I'm out of my routine, but I know it's gonna be an awesome session and we're gonna share with you guys some push press tips, some behind the jerk neck, behind the neck jerk moves with split jerk and why you should be doing them because there's some really good benefits to improving your split jerk and then we're going to share with you a upper body strengthener that's going to help you with your handstand holds handstand push-ups handstand walking and then if we get time we'll share with you our workout for the day but now we're going to head over to the gym hopefully take the dogs and have some fun I have worked out today. I took mile on a run actually this morning and it's getting kind of sketchy. It snowed a bunch here and the weather's getting better so the snow's melting. But then at night the snow melts or during the day the snow melts and like crosses all the sidewalks. And then at night it freezes again so it was like just sheets of like wet ice as it starts melting again today. And Milo might just wait here. I think I did a good job wearing him out. And we are actually still babysitting or dog sitting. Mo, who is wide awake right now and still snoring. So I think maybe they'll just wait here because I think that they're plenty tired. We'll see you guys at the gym here in just a few. I got blue thumb tape to match my shoes. Always gotta be matching. Bye guys. Bye. He always gets a kiss. Bell. Find that slippery ice. My favorite place. Nice to work out in the gym. I love the gym. Okay, so just got to the gym. First thing is just loosen up. We do this with our classes. We do this in the IBEX 60 program. You wanna get loose, you wanna get ready. Just so you don't start with the barbell and just start loading weights on it. Just make sure your shoulders are feeling good because obviously that's what we're gonna use today. So I hook a band to the rig and I take a PVC pipe and I th thread it through so the band is right in the center. Then from there, I start with my hands in my press grip. So that's gonna be hands just outside of my shoulders straight arms and I want to think about stepping out and then finding a hollow body hold position with the PVC pipe in my palm. From here, keeping a hollow body position, so squeezing my midline, squeezing my quads and my butt, I'm going to pull forward until the band gently touches the top of my head, top of my head, and then I'm going to gently release, thinking about letting my scap slide together and keeping that external rotation. I usually go through about 10 of those with tension and then for the second set, I'll step out a little bit further. From there, I superset that with just about 30 seconds per arm with a rotated grip uh, with my hand in the green band. So just sitting back, feeling a nice good stretch through my lap. What is your warm up? My elbow still hurt. If you guys watched a couple videos ago, it hasn't gotten any better, but that hasn't stopped me from not warming up. Uh, I've got my barbell out and I am probably unjustifiably optimistic that it's just gonna go away and my lifts are gonna go good today. So what are you doing for warm up? I'm gonna start putting weight on. That's what I suggest you guys don't do, which is probably why his elbows hurt. It might be. 
Today is my upper body day, so we are gonna be working on a push press. For the push press, the whole goal is focusing on dip and drive, so my chest is staying tall. I'm dipping, my knees are tracking out, so I'm priming my dip for the jerks. Then we're gonna work on some behind the neck jerks, some split jerks, and finish with a shoulder burner. So for our push press today, we have a six minute EMOM of four push press at a heavy weight for your four. So that last rep should be challenging, but we should be able to keep our rib cage down, and we shouldn't be pushing the bar away, arching our back to get our head through, but we can drive it straight up and focus on a nice cream, cream, I can't speak, clean, crisp lockout. jerks went pretty well we ended up doing five sets of two at a moderate weight so somewhere around like your 70% of your jerk and that was just for priming and for technique and then we went into five sets of one building to a heavy ideally when you're doing these behind the neck jerks or jerks you'd be using a set of blocks so you don't have to re-rack it onto your back but only going to a moderate weight we felt comfortable re-racking and we only built as heavy as we did with bringing that bar down. And the heavy singles, you noticed we would dump it forwards. So we didn't even try to re-rack it down. We would just let the bar hit the floor, strip the plates, power clean it up and put it on the rack. So if you have blocks, that will prevent you from having to do the strip the bar and power clean it up. I really love behind the neck jerks because if you think about it, when we have the bar in a front rack position, it's front loaded, which means we have to get our head out of the way by tucking our chin and get our head through and pull the bar back behind our ears. So for those of us who struggle with being able to commit our head under the bar and finishing with our head in front or the bar behind our ears, this is a really great drill because it puts the bar on the back so it's directly over the midline. So I can use my hamstrings and my glutes to toss the bar straight up and it's already in my receiving position. So I can focus on power of my legs. It also takes the pressure off of my clavicles and off of my wrist. And it just helps me focus on that solid catch position without having to worry about getting my head through, which is something I really struggle with. When it gets heavy, I get scared to commit. So just having that bar right there is a huge help for me. And I'm gonna continue on this for the next three to four weeks, just to work on the technique of my jerk because I think it's probably one of my weakest Olympic weightlifting moves. So if you guys struggle putting your head through, definitely play around with some behind the neck split jerks. They're super awesome, they feel really great, and they're pretty fun too. So we're finished up jerks, putting our weights away from that. We're gonna get some dumbbells out. Uh, we're gonna, we lifted some heavy stuff for some heavy stimulus. Now we're gonna go for some hypertrophy and we're gonna do some Tapata uh, dumbbell presses or push presses. The weights are still gonna be pretty light for the dumbbells, but the idea is just to get a lot of volume and reps in. Um, so I'm sure the first couple sets of the Tabata will feel pretty easy, but it should get substantially more challenging as we get on. I think we're gonna be 35 pounds for me, two 35 pound dumbbells, and two 25 pound dumbbells for Christy, and we're just gonna try to blow off the shoulders.
that was freaking hard. I love that for handstand push-up stamina. So, and it's really good because you don't have the compression on your cervical spine, which is what I hate about handstand push-ups. So we started with, I used 25 and Pat used 35 and that was really dicey. I was getting 14 to 16 for 20 seconds. I don't know what he was getting. I think he was stopping early. And then the second round I was getting 17 to 19. So it was crazy because when I grabbed the 15s on that first set, I was like, whoa, these are way too light. This is super easy. But then immediately by the end of the second set and the start of the third, my triceps were already blown up. So it's just really good. I don't even want to press these, but that extension of the handstand push-up, especially a kipping handstand push-up, just working that hypertrophy in the high volume for our shoulders and our triceps, really fun. You guys should give it a go. So there's a couple good ways there to get some good loading with the behind the neck jerks. So a lot of times when we're coming to the front rack, it's harder to bring it down. It's also a little bit more challenging to uh, get it up and overhead. So it's a little bit easier on the body, still get a whole bunch of loading. And then moving to the dumbbells, we got a ton of volume. We all know when we hit that fatigue in a handstand push up, where it's just, it's, it's failure. You get there and you gotta shake it out. You can't just kick back up. And the volume sets are great for that, pushing that further down the road. And then we drop down and wait to keep getting reps. So working on that higher volume to where even though we're not specifically doing handstand push-ups, it's definitely gonna improve them and push that fatigue state a little bit longer down the line. So we can either get a little bit bigger sets or just more sets before we hit that failure. Hopefully you guys found some value in this. You can implement some of this into your training. Uh, drop us in some comments below for anything you guys wanna see, if this was helpful, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.